Manx Radio Podcasts, powered by Shaw. Well, hello and welcome to this week's Countryside with Kiri Kermud and myself, Simon Clark. It's uh, that time of year for the, I suppose, one of the big events for people with livestock, Kiri. The annual Prime Stock Show is always well supported and this year even more so. It's really, really grown in momentum and lots of young people taking part too. Yeah, and of course, you know, just before we hear the, the people involved in it, it involves two sections of it, doesn't it? You know, the, on, on the Monday night, um, the the live animals are brought you know, to knock ALO. Uh, everyone has a look around and maybe picks which one is going to turn out the best at the end of it all, isn't it? Yeah, it's a real difficult job to predict it, but farmers are doing this every day at home with their own livestock in their business, and it's nice to go and look at other people's cattle. And it's an opportunity for someone that's worked hard throughout the year to come and display their best stock. Yeah, and of course, me being a Derby person, there's uh, great exciting plans ahead for the Derby area because, you know, there's talk about the, the land that's been made available, um, maybe the uh, you know, involving allotments in the future if they can get enough interest in that and maybe getting uh, some community um, activities back in the area. And I spoke to some of the people involved uh, from the RNN uh, Jerby Community Project, uh, which uh, have now uh, been signed over parts of the Jerby Medical Centre as well to use as uh, community areas. So uh, we hear from some of the people involved in that. So here we are on this week's Countryside. Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Well, we're in December now, Kerry, and it's uh, a busy time for people with livestock because it's, I suppose, one of the big events that they look forward to in the year, the uh, the Prime Stock Show. That's right. It is a busy time of year on the farms, but it's a really nice special time of year to get your best livestock out ready for the Christmas market. And I went along to Knock Alo on Monday evening to see who the winners were of this year's section. Ellie Kane, you won the intermediate section here at the Prime Stock Show for the young handlers. You were up against a lot of competition, including your own brother. Yes, it was nice to meet my brother. We've been um, sharing a cow in the class tonight, so I don't know. I think he was expecting to beat me. (laughs) But you're no stranger to the show ring. You've obviously done very well in the summer shows. And tonight you actually won the biggest class with your homebred limousine heifer, the one to two years old breeding female. Yeah, we were showing um, Fox Rock Molly. She's by Ampertain Foreman and she'll be two this February. She's um, a good heifer and she proved to be good at the summer shows. So it was nice to bring her out again in the same year. Do you think having these classes at the Prime Stock Show is a, is a good platform for the summer show? Yeah, I think it's very good. And it's also good for the young handlers to be able to get some practice in for the summer shows too. It's good. Holly Farragher, you're one of the youngest competitors here tonight at the Prime Stock Show. Who did you bring along to the show tonight? Starboy, my little car. And what breed is Starboy? He's a scimitar craft. And what did you do to prepare him for tonight for the show? I washed him and we gave him a little walk. And And was he hard to train at home? Because they can be quite difficult, the little ones. Yeah, they were. What did you have to do to walk him? If he went a little bit hard, Grandad told me, just even if he can't do it at the show, just let go. Oh, my word. But you didn't need to let go tonight. He was very well behaved, wasn't he? And also you can circle them around. And can you walk him at home on the yard? Yeah. What did you do to feed him to get him ready for tonight's show? Um, we gave him some barley and some goat tricks. And how old is he? He's still zero. He's still zero? Uh-huh. How old are you, Holly? I'm seven and he was born in September, three days before my birthday. And is he all yours? Yep. So what are you going to do with him now? Is he going to go in, into the summer shows? Yeah. Henry Watterson, you had a very difficult job here at the Prime Stock Show judging the castle classes this year. Well, yes, yeah, so some were hard, but uh, overall I think the winner was an obvious choice. What type of beast were you actually looking for? Looking for one that was full width from the shoulder right back to the hindquarters, good loin, spring of rib, a nice bit of fat cover on the rib and the loin. A lot of cattle tonight didn't have enough finish, in my opinion. And that makes all the difference, I imagine, for the second part of the show on Friday, where they're looking for the fat cover. Yeah, more than likely, yes. But, I mean, I judge today as a, a live show and presentation counted and, you know, as well. So. Uh, and you had a lot of young handlers presenting their cattle tonight as well. 
Well, that, that is a hard class, because I'm afraid it can upset people, maybe. I don't know, but uh, there should have been a few more prizes, maybe, to go around. Sarah Cooley, a winner again at the Prime Stock Show. This is becoming a habit. I don't know about that. <laughs> you are very successful year on year. What was the difference this year? Because, obviously, it's a difficult job to turn them out like you do every year. You've just got to try your best, really, getting a pair that matches and bring them along as you can so that they're ready on the day. Do you look into the genetic side of it, the breeding? Is it something that works for you that seems to you know, have that magic touch for this job in particular? Um, they've got to be bell techs, really. The more bell techs in them, the better. You'll have a bit more success. How does it make you feel winning at a Prime Stock show like this with all the crowd here tonight? Oh, it's lovely. It just makes all the work you know, well worthwhile. Do a lot of work go into preparing them for this day? Obviously, you just don't go in the field and, and fetch them out. No, they do take a lot of work, but you don't get anything out of anything if you don't put the work in. Emma Farragher, you were the overall champion young handler here this evening at the Prime Stock Show. What do you do to practice for this competition? Because there's a lot of young handlers that take part each year. Well, I was hoping to start at the end of October, but time got the better of me, so I started beginning of November. They were quite quiet out the field anyway. They come up to you, give them a scratch on the back, nice enough. Got them in the shed and spoilt them a bit. <laughs> Besties now. <laughs> do well, anything for you. Is it down to the communication between you as the handler and the beast that you're showing? Yeah. I get on better with my cows than people some days. <laughs> to win this event here at the Prime Stock Show, what does it mean to you? I'm just really proud that, you know, I've come here, I've shown people what I can do, shown off the animals, and I enjoy doing it because it's something for Holly to step into after me. She enjoys it just as much as I do. And how do you feel when you're in the ring and, and obviously the judge is there? Do you get nervous? Not really, no. I'm, um, Holly does. Holly has nerves for both of us, but yeah, I'm not too bad nowadays. <laughs> And is this your final year as the young handler? No, no, I'm only 24, yeah. I've got a year, two years, yeah. Two years, yeah. yeah. But at home, a lot of work goes into preparing the stock for the show, but you don't only prepare your own either. No, no, I help around as well. I love it. If I could show cattle all day, every day, I would. Jonathan Quine, you've been very successful here at the Prime Stock Show, winning the baby beef male section. Yes, he, he is a tremendous calf and he always has since the day he was born. A lot of work goes into getting them to this standard at this show this time of year. Yes, there's weeks and weeks of work gone into him. Handling them, getting them to walk, getting them to stand. But luckily enough with this fella, he's done everything. He's very, very good temperament for an entire male. He's been like that from the day he was born. He's always had a good temperament. He's never been excitable. And also the, the breeding that he is, it seems a very popular choice of breeds. Well, this fella is out of a heifer. And it's easier to carve a Charolais heifer to a limousine than it is to put a Charolais on a Charolais heifer. And she carved him, no help. She just got on with it and the way she went. And that's exactly what farmers are looking for in this day of age. Easy carving, less stress on everything, the animal, the farmer, and obviously if you're there on your own in a dark night, you want something that will get on with it. Well, you don't want to be out in the middle of the night on your own, do you? And things going wrong. He's got the style and the presence of everything that you'd oh. want in a show ring. He's a winner no matter where you put him. He shows himself. And that's what is needed with a show animal. It is. It is you don't want to be standing there with something that's, that doesn't want to do what you want him to do. This fellow will do everything you want. Hilary Fletcher, you had a very successful Prime Stock show, winning the native section with homebred cattle. Yes, two South Devon crosses. How do you find the competition, having native cattle, comparing them to commercial continental breeds? They're a completely different animal, different shape, and quite often people look at them in a different way. I think sometimes you're, you're at a disadvantage. But a lot of people prefer the more traditional breeds for the eating side of it, the, the marbling, the extra fat. It seems to be a lot more popular now. There's a swing back towards traditional. Oh, yes, most definitely. I must admit, I think the eating quality is possibly better with the native breeds. And they're also a lot quieter to deal with, especially in these days when there's not many people around on farms. That was Ellie Kane, Holly and Emma Farragher, 
Jonathan Quine, Sarah Cooley and Hilary Fletcher. And of course, uh, later on in uh, this week's Countryside, we'll be hearing about the second section of the Prime Stock show uh, where they all meet up at the Isle of Man meat plant, Kiri. That's also a busy section of the show as well and it's nice how many young farmers have been actively involved this year and taken part in both events. Yeah, and we'll be finding out whether uh, the people who sort of said, yeah, that's the first and second one going in to the meat plant, whether that was the case uh, when they judged the carcasses afterwards. Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Well, exciting new plans are afoot for the community of Jerby. There's been a new committee set up on a new project called the Erinane Northern Community Project. It's been talking about what they're going to do with the land that's uh, been made available in the area, maybe the talk of allotments in the future, and also part of the Jerby Medical Centre, which has been now signed over to help the community run different events there. To find out more about it, I spoke to the Aaron Michael MHK, Tim Baker, but first of all, to Louise Whiteleg, who is one of the trustees, and Angela Quaggan, who's the chairperson of the Erinane Community Project. So we are looking towards establishing community activities for the people of Jerby to engage in, looking towards answering questions that were raised at public meetings recently and things that, well, essentially that Jerby community would like to see happening round and about. We've uh, taken on a licence for the Jerby Health and Community Centre to make some of those things happen and also looking further afield towards supporting the development of the local BMX track and maybe taking some allotments forward and a community garden. The community spirit seems to be growing again and this is the perfect opportunity for people to meet up in the sort of place that you've got now. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I would say that the community engagement is definitely on the up. I had a, a terribly interesting conversation recently uh, with, a, with a friend of mine who uh, provided me with a, a very interesting consultation document that took place 17 years ago, which highlighted many of the same issues and many of the same things that people wanted to see happening in Jerby. And I can understand that perhaps why there is a degree of cynicism at the moment from from some quarters as to why people aren't necessarily engaging straight away, that they've wanted lots of things happening for a lot of time and it hasn't happened. But, you know, 17 years down the line, we are actually now making that happen. But certainly you can see that there are people engaging, there are people wanting to get on board and people want to see things happening. Louise Whiteleg, you're one of the trustees yes, of it yes. as well. It's, it's people that are here excited yeah, about it. it's really, really exciting. I mean, this facility has been up here and, and not been utilised as well as it could be. But there's so many people who we've all got together. Angela's been a big driving force behind it and we've all got together. And we've all got so much energy and ideas. I mean, one thing Jerby has got a lot of is energy and also wind and space and and space <laughs> and wind so to provide something a space that the community can use and they can use for the good and they can use we can do exercise classes we can do cooking we can do all sorts of different community events it's really only limited by your ideas so we've got a great team of really enthusiastic people all specializing in different little areas of things and hopefully we'll get this place used and we'll get that real sense of community back because Jerby I mean it is I spend a lot of time up here because I, I've got my girl guides up here and I've seen how much positive that's grown it's, it's been brilliant and the girls are really engaged with the girl guiding. Let's have more of it. Jerby is isolated in some respects because of the buses and, you know, it's not easy on a cold night to get into Ramsey to go do something. Whereas if we've got the facilities here, let's have the events here. I mean, it makes perfect sense. You look at the past, the, the public house was here, yeah. they had a football team here, the cricket team, you know, the BMX track was going. I mean, work has started on that. So mm. there's lots of things that could be brought back to it, isn't there? Absolutely, massive potential. When I first came across to the island, one of my first jobs, I am guilty to say, was doing the asbestos survey on the old Jerby pub. But while I was doing that, I did see and get a taste of how much it was actually a hub of the community. It wasn't just a place to drink. It was, you know, where people met and socialised and hanged out. So this facility, I mean, this is an amazing building. It's got so much space, so much versatile, usable space. It's got great kitchen facilities, little private rooms, big open spaces. It'll be grand. Watch this space. Watch this space. And also, other places have got little projects that uh, they've opened up, little allotments, and that's something uh, as well that's 
pretty well been put forward and, and a lot of interest in. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, a, a lot of the allotments around and about are, are oversubscribed with waiting lists. Yeah. People came forward at the public meetings. And I think, like Louise said, it's very much about we're only really limited by what ideas people put forward. And frankly, even if it's the most ridiculous idea in the world or, or, or seemingly is the most ridiculous idea in the world, if people would like to see it happening and there's a demand for it, we'll try and look into it and see what we can do. But with the regards to the allotments, we've been around the island, we've visited different allotments, people have been getting in contact with other successfully running allotments and saying, right, OK, help us out, what's our springboard to make this happen? Will Nelson is looking into making some land available, perhaps, to start the allotment idea. We've also expressed an interest in the parade ground, the former camp development, to say, please, you know, consider us for some community space. So, you know, it's going to happen. It might be a bit of a, a, a when and how, but it will absolutely happen. Well, it's, it's so positive and it's great to, that you two as well are just sort of driving this on and, and you can see by the enthusiasm, the enthusiastic people that's here, that it's, it's going to go somewhere, It's, isn't it's it? really exciting and it's really one of my mottos in life is the hardest thing about starting is starting. So I just say to people out there, if you've got an idea, you know, stop thinking about it and just go for it. And that's really what's happening now, isn't it? Very much so. There's been an awful lot of talk and now we're behind the reins, pushing, you know, so get in touch with us. Um, we've got a Facebook page. We have indeed, Erin uh, Northern Community Project Facebook page. Or you can email jobycommunity at gmail.com or you can give me a ring on 331794 Well Tim Baker, one of the MHKs for Aaron Michael, it's an exciting time this isn't it? Great to see some enthusiastic people behind this. Absolutely, it's uh, tremendous the way the local communities uh, responded to this opportunity of getting the uh, use of the community centre and um, you know the number of people that turn up today, the ideas that have been banded around, some really great initiatives come in and I, I think this is the start of something uh, very very positive for Jim I mean, people, there was fours and against when, when it was actually passed for the medical centre here, but I mean, that's still going, that side of it, but there's just this space that's been utilised more efficiently, is it? Yeah, I mean, or, it was, or community side? this wing of the uh, building was designated as a community area when the building was first done, but it's never been used, and it was... Um, Really, the community had no engagement with the building and the Department of Health and Social Care had no engagement with the community. So it was just sat there gathering dust, to be honest, Simon, and uh, absolutely delighted to see that as the community stepped forward, a very positive response from the Department of Health and Social Care as well, who really buy into the idea of community use of this of this space. And uh, it mirrors some of the uh, ideas in, in other areas of the island, particularly uh, the hub down in, uh, in, in, in Port Erin. I know Angela's been down there and had a good look at what's been going on there and really taken some ideas from that and uh, lots of people here and uh, some real energy about. It's great because it's sort of just just in the right time for obviously the land that's been made available and people to put their ideas forward for what they want and this is the perfect place for the people to meet up and discuss however bizarre their ideas. <laughs> well, the thing, the thing that was clear to me, Simon, as I got to know Jerby better, was there was a complete lack of a focal point for the community to meet. And, you know, most communities there's a pub or there's a, there's a village hall or a, a cafe or whatever, but here, very, very limited. And it's, it's great that there's a place here that the community can take some ownership over. And uh, I think it will evolve in different ways over the coming months and years, but fantastic to uh, see the way everybody's rallied around, the head of the school's got involved, the, the shop have got involved, the commissioners have got involved, Kelly who runs nursery, it's fantastic to be honest that everybody's pulling together and actually working collaboratively to try and drive this forward. Of course the, the talk of land may be available in future for allotments and things yep. like that, Jerby are the first people on the island. Well, <laughs> the great thing about Jerby is, is the amount of space there is here and um, I know with my involvement in, in Department of Infrastructure that Minister Harm is really keen to see some positive things happen in this area and uh, there are no limits, there's a huge number of, uh, of acres of land to be, to be developed and I think the community really has stepped forward and, and said what it wants to see and uh, government can't sit back and ignore that. Perfect area for kite flying. Well, it's certainly pretty breezy, Simon, yeah. <laughs> Tim Baker, Aaron Michael MHK and Louise Whiteleg and Angela Quaggan who are involved in the RNA Northern Community Project and uh, great news and there was great support there even uh, on Saturday when they had that open day for people to come in. There was little plans up on boards, the kids were in their rooms there playing. 
you know, and it, there's a lot of people, you know, the, the head teacher, as they said, of Jerby School was there, Simon Gubby from the Jerby stores, um, you know, uh, great... commissioners were all there. It was just great. There was wanting, people are wanting to try and get something done. You know, it's uh, like we said in there, the, the cricket team's gone, the football team's gone, the, the public house is gone. You know, it's all centre of community. So, uh, and of course, with Stella's closing down as well, you know, it's uh, just something to bring... Uh, maybe get people to to stay around the area. That's right. It's a lovely, peaceful part of the island as well, and and like so much vast open space to develop, like a cricket team or a football team. So and lots of young people around. Yeah, why not? It just needs a bit of guidance, yeah. doesn't it? Have you got a kite? I have got a kite. Have you? Well, there you go. It's the chance to get it down. Could have the World Championships there next year. Why not? Yeah. But anyway, let's get back to the uh, Prime Stock Awards. Uh, Kerry, you went to, to the meat plant. This was on the on the Friday, wasn't it? That's right. A very busy evening in the Isle of Man meat plants on Friday. And it was so good to see so many young people there to, to see if they chose right on Monday and then followed it through to the carcass section. And I caught up with some of the winners and the judge on the night. Congratulations to the Convig family. Sandra, a champion carcass here at the Prime stock show this year with a homebred beast mm, very pleased very pleased i guess it'll be a lot about the genetics ashley you're keen on getting the best quality there is we're very keen on the genetics and the farthest bull of this heifer came from orosdale which <laughs> uh, i have i have two bulls at home both orosdale bulls and they, they're both tremendous and throw us top stock a lot of it is is down to the sire but there's got to be some good maternal mothers around as well yeah we keep um, really good cows they're all top uh, limousine cows which throw um, tremendous no, calves a bit of um, the one that just won the show is a little bit of belted Galloway in it mother was a belted Galloway but that cow always throws a really good calf so it's consistent within the herd the same cows will produce yeah. the same good yeah. calves yeah, they do yeah. yeah we won the fat stock show a few years ago and uh, it was the same cows that was throwing the calves then to uh, win them shows. That was a lazer bull that I bought from Oatlands. You have to know your families within the herd, what works and what doesn't work, because at the end of the day, it's, it's a business. Yeah, yeah it's a business and, um, you know, we, have, we just keep these good family of limbs and cows and uh, they just throw these good... Um, these good cattle. Graham Crow, you've done the double win the hill lamb section. You must be very delighted. Yeah, I was pleased with that, Kerry. There, there wasn't a big lot of competition in the class, but I like to try and enter a couple of pens every year just to keep it going, make sure there is there is a competition. The hill lambs are never quite as well uh, shaped as the as the lowland ones, so you, you're never going to win the overall championship. But they, they always have a special class. For the, the hill weathers and uh, so we always put a couple of entries in that and they are kept quite differently to, to lowland sheep yeah they're, they're much less intensive and uh, they generally come through to mature later in the season these lamb carcasses are quite light they're only around about 16 17 kilos whereas the ones that would be winning the, the supreme award would be up around 20 21 so yeah. so that the scotty types this is what they were scotch weathers they would they would normally mature in the, the sort of new year later in the season and it gives more of a spectrum of throughput for the plant as well. The, the, the hill type of lambs will come through later in the season and keep it going. Perfectly good, uh, good carcasses and very, very, very well flavoured, I would say. Congratulations, Sarah. You've done the double yet again. Wonderful achievement. Thank you very much, Kiri. And was it the same lambs as on Monday? It was the same weather lambs, so more or less, yes. We've got the judge with us here today and he really, really commends your work back home. Gavin, what did you think of, of Sarah's carcass? The individual lamb that won was an exceptional carcass. It was truly exceptional. As soon as we went into the cold room, it just stood out. It was a, a, a clear winner by miles. A really good lamb. It was not only the lambs that you were judging here today, Gavin, it was also the beef and the pigs as well. Yes. How was the standard in comparison to where you're from back in the UK? The standard was exceptional. I've been and judged at quite a few shows in, our, in my local county of Cumbria. I've done a few shows out of the county and the carcasses here today would stand up for judging at any show some really good carcasses. There's been a bit of a swing towards the native traditional breeds, more marble and better eating quality. Is this a trend that's you know, going to die out again? No, no. I think your traditional breeds are coming back in a big way, basically because the government and farmers are trying to 
encourage more sustainable farming. Uh, they're trying to get cattle back into the hills and graze down the hills, different to what the sheep are, so things will get a chance to grow. And there's a, there's a big swing to, towards native breeds. And they are really good eating. <laughs> the they are really good. Charlie Vernon, the president of the Southern District Agricultural Show, the Prime Stock Show this year. A roaring success? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, I could do with a roaring fire. It's a bit cold in this fridge. <laughs> but there's a lot of people here tonight for the final part of the show, Charlie. Yeah, indeed. Another great turnout. We, uh, the mart was absolutely heaving on Monday night and the uh, Alman Meats is very busy as well in the fridge. It was a real great turnout of young farmers on, on both occasions. This is a real pleasure to see. Yeah, it's really important that the young farmers get to see the produce you know, before and after. So it's from, literally from field right the way through to plate. And for these champion carcasses here tonight, Charlie, uh, the beef, the lamb and the pork, will you have any specific buyers wanting them in particular? Yeah, so th this year the... Um, Premium prizes will go to uh, WE tiers of Ramsey, which is uh, great to see. They'll have the, all the rosettes in the window. Yeah. If so if you want some prime cuts, that's where to go. Tim Baker, you had the lovely job of presenting the prizes here to the wonderful winners at this year's Prime Stock Show. And it was a very positive outlook on the quality of the livestock here from our visiting judge. Absolutely. He'd come from, from uh, the Cumbria, from I think the Penrith area, and he was full of praise for the quality of the uh, all the categories, but in particular the beef. And he said that the winning beef was would have won prizes in anywhere in the country. He really was extremely positive. And I understand he comes from a, a butchery background, so he really understands it from the customer end of the spectrum that this is great quality meat, and it's got to be such a positive for the, in for the industry. That was Gavin Little, the judge from Cumbria. Graham Crow, the Double Hill winners. Charlie Vernon, the president of the Southern District Agricultural Show. Sarah Cooley, the Double Beltex winner. Ashley and Sandra Convig, Beef Champion and Tim Baker presenting the prizes. It was pretty accurate at the end of the day, wasn't it, what uh, the people thought? Absolutely. It was such a, a difficult task to get them right on Monday and then again on Friday. But obviously the judges, they followed through and did the double in two cases. Did you have a, a stab at uh, picking the, your winner from the Monday night and then seeing if it won on the Friday? It was a great turnout of beef cattle in particular on Monday. And I did have a favourite and it was nice to see her go through and actually take the overall honours in the Isle of Man meat plant. And Sarah Culey's lambs, they're always there or thereabouts and they just looked absolutely fantastic in there. Yeah, they? well done to everyone involved in that. It was great that, um, you know, that... Uh Tears, the butchers and Ramsey were mentioned as well. You know, particularly with the with the things they put forward involving the the labelling and the butchers charter in particular. And it just shows that some of these things are actually working, and and people are getting involved more in it. That's right. He's following it through. It's Manx born and bred, and he's supporting the the Manx local farmer. And to have those rosettes and the trophies in the butcher shop window, it is a real selling point. But it's something to be very proud of as well. It is. Manx Radio's Countryside is brought to you by NFU Mutual. Well, your predictions were pretty good for the Prime Stock Show, Kerry, wasn't it? Your, your winner come out with a good rump. <laughs> she certainly yeah. did. She was a fine carcass. And to get that top grade is what everybody's craving for. And it takes years of generations of quality stock to get it there. And well done to those guys. Yeah, and well done to you because how you got round and chatted to that many people uh, on the two nights of it. And, and it was great that people wanted to talk about it as well. You know, it, it's a big event for people with livestock, isn't it? That's right. It's always a happy time of year, the, the Christmas Prime Stock Show. And everyone's getting excited, ready for Christmas. But uh, to see that quality meat on offer and people can now go and purchase it in the butcher shops and have a piece for themselves, I think it's a great idea. Yeah, it's great to see that, um, you know, the butcher's charter, the label inside of it. You know, these little ideas, I suppose, that were talked about to start with. They're coming through um, and, and people are getting involved in it now with, with good success and good feedback, I think, from the public and the producers too. Well, that's right. It makes you want to produce good stock and for people to enjoy it locally and get the feedback. It's, it's just really, really great. Yeah, and you'll be able to visit Jerby more now when they get all these projects going from the, the Erinan uh, community project there at Jerby. I think it's a brilliant idea. Too many people are sitting in their houses and to have a community, oh, you need a bit of leadership and get them outside and get events organised. What better way to enjoy yeah, the Manx there, yeah, there countryside? There's plenty of room up there, that's one thing for certain. All right, we'll leave it there for this week's Countryside.
And we'll be back next week. So for me, Simon Clark. And me, Kerry Kermit. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Don't sit in the slow lane. Join the fast lane right now with Shaw's all-new Superfast Plus Broadband. Enjoy more bandwidth, amazing speeds and the best value on the island from just £23.95 per month. So don't be left behind. Get a piece of the high-speed action with Superfast Plus Broadband from Shaw. For details, visit our stores in Douglas, Ramsey and Port Erin or click shaw.com. Love being Shaw. Terms and conditions apply.